guys. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening from this side of the world. I'm so happy. I'm so glad that this is happening. Like it's happening finally. Finally. This is um, something I have had in mind for a while now. It's been months. As a matter of fact, years. Yes. That I've been thinking about doing something like this. So I'm really grateful to God that I'm finally able to bet this. Yes. And um, very importantly, the fact that my sister has agreed to be my first guest on the show. An absolute <laughs> yes. pleasure. <laughs> you would notice that we have the first, our first names are like the virtually same. the same. Okay. <laughs> yes. And then we are both PhD holders. You know, I saw somebody's comment on our post where they were like, the person was like, okay, um, PhD, Association of PhD holders. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I didn't even think about it. But when I saw yeah. it this afternoon, I was like, wow, that's true. Yeah. That's true. Uh, yeah, so I'm grateful to God that we are able to do this. All right, yes. so I'll quickly sh uh, go through the biography of my guest. So I'll just read that quickly before we go on so that you can meet her, see, and get to know who she is, okay? All right, so if... Uh, I can see some people already joined us. I can see two people are watching. So you can just leave us a comment. Let's know where you're watching from. Say hi. Say hello. Say something. Let's just know that you are here with us. So thank you so much for joining us. I'm really grateful that you have honored us with your presence. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. So anyone there? Yes, I can see people joining actually. Please let's know before I read our biography. Oh, thank you, Yeti K. Yes. Yay. <laughs> thank you so much. Yes. We're now, very we, okay. <laughs> yes, our own Yeti K. Let me just mention that myself and my guests actually have the same background. We graduated from the same faculty in the university. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And Yeti K, our first commenter or commenter actually graduated from the same university with us yes yeah, so i'm really glad thanks for joining us thank you olua yemc ajila for joining us thank you thank you i hope you can hear us loud and clear please let me know in the comment section if you can hear me well i want to be sure there's no echo or anything like that let someone please tell us if all is sounding right yes please i'm waiting i just want to be sure yes so up loud tech <laughs> yes so oh awesome thank you yet okay thank you thank you okay all right so i'll just go straight to reading the biography of dr lola and okay so she is a uk-based editor and proofreader who specializes in the non-fiction and academic niches she is also a writer and self-editing expert with over 14 years of experience, like massive, 14 years. Coming from an engineering background, she holds a PhD in energy and power from Cranfield University in the United Kingdom, where she lives. She has a deep love for simplifying learning, and one of her biggest pet peeves is finding errors in written material. Having seen sub-Saharan Africans in UK universities struggle with writing and the consequences associated with this, she understands the importance of writing coherently in the grand scheme of seeking opportunities and communicating ideas. This has fueled our mission to help as many sub-Saharan Africans as possible become um, better writers. In line with this aspiration, she has authored a book Catch it first, how to edit and proofread your writing, and offers personalized writing coaching to people who want to learn how to write better. She supports writers and aspiring writers in our closed Facebook community, Write Better Africa. She also shares tips on writing, editing, and proofreading on our website, www 
lolaayongbae.com and at www.instagram.com forward slash lolaayongbae PhD. So that's our guest, Dr. Lola Anyongbae. Thanks again for joining me. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. And okay. I do apologize so, for the alarm you could hear in the background. Okay, no, no That's problem. Been sorted now. Sorry about that. All right. It's an okay. absolute pleasure to be here. You know, like I've said to okay. you in private, I'm honored that you reached out to me for this maiden All edition right. of the book show. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for, you know, accepting to be my first guest. You know, like I told you, I'd been thinking about it and yeah. I just thought about it. Who can I just call upon in two weeks and be like, see, I have to <laughs> get this ball rolling. <laughs> that was why I was yeah. begging you and I, I was like, I'm sorry for this late, um, you know, notice. But yeah. thank you so much for agreeing to do this. Yes, and the ball is now rolling and it will keep rolling by God's grace. Amen. Okay, so today we'll be talking about your book, Catch It First. Oh, yes. thank you. See, another sister of ours is online. Adesonya, Oluwa Tosin. Yes, so thank you so much for joining us. I'm so happy to see you. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so we'll be talking about Dr. Lola's book, Catch It First, how to edit and proofread your writing yeah. okay so the first thing i would like us to talk about is the fact that you have an engineering background mm -hmm. okay um and now you have delved into writing mm -hmm. editing proofreading and stuff like that can you just share with us why the shift what was responsible for that shift because probably would have expected that you'd be working in um maybe a chemical engineering firm or something like that right now okay but you have decided to go into writing into editing why what 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 really led to that the the short answer is that i just got tired of being a square peg in a round hole mm. i that's the short answer but obviously there's a long answer coming <laughs> so at some point i became very alert about the importance to walk in my purpose yeah. and engineering was not the truth is I had no business studying engineering none of my natural abilities um, were point in that direction I've got quite a few uh, if, even if I say so myself I'm quite a talented person but none of those talents point you know towards engineering but the way it is in Nigeria, if you're clever to some extent, you know, or if the grown-ups in your life feel that you, you've got what it takes to study a particular course, because we're such a society that is focused on professionalism, we, you know, back in the day anyway, I can't speak for now, the, you know, it, it was normal to stay a child in a direction that they felt would be beneficial. I, even though I was always in the sciences, I didn't set out, like I would not have even touched engineering, you know, with a pole. I started off wanting to study medicine and when it didn't work and um, work out, you know, so what other prestigious courses there? Mm. And so chemical engineering came into the mix. And looking back on those years, it was a struggle, you know, because I, I, I didn't want to be studying chemical engineering, mm. but I did it anyway. And I remember when I was in my final year and I started thinking about the future, I said to myself, I am not going to stay in engineering because I know this isn't where I should be. And I was desperate to veer off the engineering scene. Mm. And I thought to myself, I looked at all the courses I had taken, you know, in the five years, and I thought, what courses really resonated with me? And it was the management sciences, you know. And I said to myself, I would go study something like entrepreneurship or management. I knew I was going to do a master's right after NYSC, you know. So I started searching for those kind of courses in the UK and all of that. And I, I did get admission to study, um, I think it was entrepreneurship or one of those courses. I can't even remember what school it was in, again. And I remember having a chat with an uncle of mine 
and he was like ah lola how can you turn your back on engineering that you would struggle because you have an engineering background you will struggle with people that you know have a background in 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 management sciences or what in the business world because you don't have their their background you know and in my naivety i i thought it made sense mm. you know and i said okay i'll try and find a middle ground and i'll go for engineering management so i started looking for courses that had to do with engineering management and i found one you know and i applied and i, I was at um, you know offered an admission and i ended up doing engineering management for my masters i thoroughly enjoyed engineering management because even though it had engineering in it, it was largely management. It was how to manage engineering. So it was beautiful, right? I, in fact, my master's was a walkover, you know, effortlessly. Sometimes I look and I wonder, how could you have made a distinction? Effortlessly, I made a distinction. This was me who struggled to even make a tutu. I, ended, I finished from now with a tutu. And it was such a struggle to make that tutu, you know? And I remember telling myself when I, got into um during the, the the first lecture more a bit like an induction when i went to do my masters i said to myself lola this is your chance to redeem yourself for yourself because i felt it was just unfair you know that i couldn't make more than two two from my first degree and i mm. set out that i was going to you know go for the best and i focused on having a distinction and honestly it wasn't a lot of hard work oh yes i worked hard but it wasn't the kind of hard work that got me breaking you know my back or bending um in in ways that i shouldn't have no it was easy the resources were there i put in the work and i got the results so i got into the workplace and i realized that somehow the chemical engineering thing in fact not even the chemical engineering the engineering world was haunting me you know, I ended up working in automotive companies and nobody wanted to know that my background wasn't even in mechanical engineering or any or automotive engineering. Even though I was a quality engineer, you know, and I was supposed to be managing processes and the quality management system. Somehow, people just assumed that I had a mechanical engineering or automotive engineering background. And I got given tasks wow. that would give me a headache in the workplace. But in true Nigerian fashion, I survived. Mm -hmm. I coped. I got commended by my bosses. In fact, I remember one of my appraisals. And you know, in the UK, when they're doing an appraisal for you, you write your bit. So you write what you think you've achieved, and your boss will do the same. And I remember struggling over, you know, that piece of paper. I was like, ha, I've not achieved anything in this place. You know, and I just wrote something very skimish. And when I sat in front of my boss and I read what he wrote, I was like, God, Lola, are you okay? Is this God or something? You know, this has to be God because. I didn't see myself achieving all those things. But what am I trying to point at? Inwards, I was struggling, right? I was struggling. So even though I had achieved my heart desire in branching out of engineering and taking on management, it still wasn't happening fully in the workplace. And so when I went to do my PhD, I said to myself, I'm going into academia. That was, you know, my motivation. I'm going into academia. At least I, I would have a nine to five job in the companies I worked in before typical manufacturing setup there were three shifts 24 hour shifts three shifts mm -hmm. and i would go, get to work as early as 6 30 if i was on the early shift you know and i had a little child i had a toddler that hadn't even started school you know so it was hard and when i was on the late shift i would finish at 11 30 at night so i i thought to myself i'm tired of all this let me get a phd i'm going to academia mm -hmm. you know and i started my phd with the thought of going into academia PhD came with its own struggles. I had a baby. Life was not as easy as I thought it was going to be. Long story short, I finished my PhD successfully and it was time to think about next steps. And I sat down and said to myself, I remember after passing my Bible that week after, I, I started thinking really deeply. I said, Lola, what do you really want to be doing? Mm. I thought about the stress I had gone, gone through. I mean, generally, God has been good to me. I don't look like what I've been through, you know, to God be the glory. And I, I thought about the inner struggles, you know, things that for other people would have caused hypertension and stuff like that, but God didn't let it happen. I thought of my inner struggles and I was just tired of being in the wrong place. And I said to myself, I don't care what people think about, you know, me right now. I need to walk in my purpose, you know? And I thought about my children. They're still at the age where they need to be dropped off at school and picked up, you know? and. My husband, because of you know several reasons, he's not always available to do those things consistently. So a lot of the 
going to school and all of that falls back on me and i said to myself i'm not going to be taking these children to a childminder after school what mm. so i work for a childminder to look after my children and then miss out on their lives all of mm. that with me desperate to achieve my purpose you know at least to walk in my purpose got me sitting down and having a conversation with myself and i started to pray i set up time i fasted and i prayed and i asked god god what should i be doing i am tired in fact i reached out with a few close friends and i read books you know how it is if when you want to discover your purpose and stuff like that so it's not as if i didn't discover i didn't know what my purpose was but i wasn't sure i didn't have clarity so i i am um, reached out to a few friends asked them what do i really do well if somebody told you to you know um talk about me what would you say and there were different things you know everybody had it very interestingly everybody had a very different perspective about who i was and so that really didn't help do you understand it really didn't help so i said okay it's me and god now so after a few days of praying and fasting if i can remember on the last day of the fast i was frustrated because i hadn't heard a word mm. and i sat on my bed the, i dropped off my son you know my daughter must have been in the in her cot sleeping or something like that my husband wasn't home and i sat on my bed and i i was frustrated with god i just said god it's not fair you know i have been fasting and i've been praying and you haven't said anything it's not fair you know and i was almost mm. at that point where you are sulking in fact not almost i was actually sulking you know i, mm. I thank god for the kind of relationship i have with god but when people look at when people hear or rather if i give people insight into my work with god they probably think i'm disrespectful sometimes you know and perhaps <laughs> i am but god loves me still <clears throat> and he knows how to deal with me you know so i i sat on my bed that morning and just when I was saying that, well, maybe I'll just go and continue applying. And all this time I had been applying for jobs and none of them came back with any results. And wow. I thought, hmm, even the one I thought was going to come out <laughs> with something positive, I didn't hear a word. So wow. I was really, I was quite frustrated. And you know how it is when you're applying for jobs at PhD level. We're not talking about mm-hmm. an application you sit down and do in 24 hours. We're talking about applications mm. that you sit down and prepare over a week, two weeks, or even more, depending on what you're going for, you know? And just while I was there in my soaking, you know, state, I just heard the words very clearly, crystal clear. They were crisp, just two words. In fact, one word anyway, proofreading. Wow. It came strong. It came, it came from my inside, but I heard it with my outer ear. And I, I, I jolted. I was not expecting it because to me, I was even just rebelling, if you know what I mean. And mm. proofread, I was like, what the heck, proofreading? What is proofreading? Because I've never, I've never used a proofreader. I've written so excellently in the past that all my academic work, I've never used a proofreader. I preferred my dissertation myself, you know? The one person that volunteered to help me proofread my dissertation, I gave to with out of respect because she's someone that i really respect you know but she didn't even give me feedback and i didn't ask for it because i didn't think i needed it and the the the, mm. the feedback that came from i had two supervisors the supervisors that i really stood in awe of because he used to be so critical the feedback i ca- that came from him about my dissertation was that this is a very well written piece of work you know he commended me in fact i saved that email just so that I would never forget it. It was mm. it was a validation at that time. Because I was like, what? If there's somebody's um, feedback that I'm scared of receiving, it's this guy, you know? And it's such a very well-written piece of work, you know? And so I never used a proofreader. That's the point I'm trying to make. I didn't know what one, when, what, maybe I knew how, you know, what the definition was, but I didn't know the workings. And a friend of mine who I was, you know, who was a house guest at the time, walked past my, room my my bedroom door was open walked past and i called her i said please come that i just heard these words what do you know about proofreader um proofreaders or proofreading i said oh when i wrote my master's dissertation i used a proofreader i remember my university university said we all international students needed to use a proofreader i was like hey okay and that was where the journey started okay so it's a it's a bit of a long story but that was where it all started i didn't obey immediately to be honest because i thought you don't need a degree to be a proofreader <laughs> so i didn't mm. obey <laughs> you know i rebelled because that wasn't what i was expecting <laughs> you yeah. know but long wow. story short after some fruitless effort 
I thought to myself, Lola, you better humble yourself and just obey. Exactly. And so it's been a journey since then. Wow. 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 That is kind of inspiring. Like, yes, that must have been God at work. Mm. To think that you had to go all the way to the point of doing a third degree before you mm. even were able to sit down and decide that, okay, mm. It's either God's purpose for my life or nothing. Mm. Yes, I think that should inspire somebody watching this right now. Yes, I'm really touched by this. Yes, I'm really touched. And I'm happy that you have decided to walk in God's you know, plan and purpose for your life. There's nothing like it. There's nothing mm. like it. I'm someone that's really, you know, I care so much about the issue of purpose. And there is nothing like doing what God wants you to do if not you will just yeah. be on a fruitless journey going round about mm. you won't achieve anything and there won't be fulfillment so thank you so much for sharing that yeah. with us thank you so much so let's go oh, into wow. the book now because it's a okay. book show right it is a book show okay so <laughs> all right so let's talk about the book oh thank you so much i can see more people join um thank you faith opoyo thank you peter polique I hope That's I pronounced that correctly. That's my Okay, home. so th thank you so much. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you so much for joining us. God bless you. Yes, yeah, thank you. Someone said it's either God's purpose or nothing. That's, we, sh we need to come to that point in our lives, really. Yes, we need to come to that point in our lives where we decide that it's either God's purpose for me or nothing. Mm -hmm. We are nothing but pencils in the hands of the creator he knows why he has placed us on earth and we yeah. just have to align with his will for our lives mm -hmm. if not we are on a wild goose, goose chase so okay so next why did you write catch it first okay. why you could have written a story or something but you decided to write catch it first why it's all part of purpose one of the things that and you know I cut the story sh very short, as long as it may have sounded. Now, I later began to reflect why God would tell me to go into proofreading. It wasn't difficult to know the answer. It wasn't difficult because all my life, I've always loved words. I've always loved to read. As a child, I was a typical bookworm. I read stuff I shouldn't have even read in my quest to just read, you know. And if you ask me, I don't know why I was reading. It wasn't because I was, you know, I was on a quest for information. I just loved to read. And as I grew older, I used to get really irritated, irritated by errors, whether when spoken or in writing, you know. And the ones in writing used to really grate on my nerves because, you see, when you speak and you say something wrong, I mean, no one is perfect. Even even the best speaker does have moments of, you know, slipping up. When you speak and you say something wrong, people forget if your message is strong, you know, or if maybe there's something else to make up for the, the bad mm. grammar. But in writing, there's so many kinds of errors. Just putting a comma where it shouldn't be can totally change a sentence and get, pass across right. a wrong message. I've read books, especially with all due respect, and sadly so, from people in my you know, that come from my part of the world. Because when I was growing up, the internet was not a thing, like we all know. So most of the resources that you know were available in written form were from across the shores of Nigeria. So most of them would have passed through, and then self-publishing wasn't a thing either. So most of them would have passed through the rigorous process of editing and proofreading. So you could be sure that when you held a book in your hands, you know, they had, um, you, you were reading correct English. So um, when I came across Nigerians, especially writing with a lot of carelessness, it really got on my nerves, especially when it was in school. You know, like, for example, I was in secondary school and people are writing stuff, you know, and just write letters and the letters are just hard to read. 
I used to feel so irritated. But even when teachers made mistakes, I used to be so irritated. Of course, I'm more mature now. They don't annoy me anymore. What it does to me now is it makes me want to reach out to help. People that are in my circle, so people that are in my Facebook group, for example, or people that have sort of forged some sort of relationship with me online would know that it's not strange for me to get into their DMs and point out some error in a post they made. I do respectfully because i understand that um people can be embarrassed by errors but for me i look at the bigger picture you know being misunderstood your reputation your reputation being tainted so when i was going to choose a topic for a book it was only natural that i wrote about something that i was passionate about and i would say that to every writer out there you, you, you don't write stuff because just because you can passion has a way of magnifying a topic passion has a way of helping a topic or a subject achieve you know, it's intent. Passion is what makes writing interesting because people can feel your vibes. You know, people can, it comes easy to you. People can feel your vibes in your writing. They can connect with the, the passion that you feel. And so I wrote Cartage first because I wanted people to be able to catch the errors in their writing first before it got out to other people. Right, thank you so much. Thank you so yeah. much. Thank you. Um, next, I would like you to tell us a bit about your journey towards writing Catch It first. Okay. Oh, well, it's a very long journey. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, a bit of a, I'm, I'm a bit of a peculiar person, you know, mm. and I, I should have written Catch It first a long time ago. But again, part of it was my not having clarity. You would remember that I reached out to you at some point because I wanted to write a book. And then I was still doing my PhD and I thought, oh, I had some spare time. You know how a PhD can be? You have times of intense work and then you have exactly. you know, some time to yourself. And I thought, okay. And then I took your right, your book writing course. Mm -hmm. At the time, I wasn't even sure what I wanted to write about. And I think that lack of clarity, you know, got in the way and I didn't do anything. And then I finished my PhD and I had all this time in my hand, on my hands rather. And, you know, with everything that was going on, me trying to understand what I should be doing, thinking about my financial circumstances and a lot of other things, I knew I needed to write a book, but I didn't do anything about it. And so one day I was just um, on IG, you know, I was trying to build an online presence, you know, because of my decision to um, obey God and just do what I should be doing. And I came across an advert. It was um, about, it was an e-book writing challenge. It was a, it was a month long. And I, th I said to myself, well, maybe this is what you need. You need to pay, you know, so that you can get your acts together. Since you won't do it by yourself, since you won't do it, you know, by motivating yourself, maybe when you commit your money, to something you will remember that you paid to be here and you will do everything you should do you know and so me understanding that i needed something to push me out of my comfort zone i paid for that um ebook group i mean they weren't going to do writing for you they were only going to like put you on some sort of a um structure you know, so they tell you today, okay, today you should you'll be expected to have written your front matters, tomorrow you'll be expected to have written your chapter one, okay, you have this block of time to do your research and stuff like that. And so this is me having taken your course. Remember, I had no business <laughs> going to join that challenge yeah. because I knew how to write a book. So my issue wasn't mm -hmm. about not knowing how to write a book, mm. especially also because I'm an editor. I had edited books at that point. Exactly. You exactly. understand? So I knew how to write a book, but I just needed something to push me out of my comfort mm. zone. And also, the good thing is it ended up being an opportunity to network and help people with, you know, a little bit of their struggles, their writing struggles. But I paid my way to writing my own first book. How does that sound? I knew I, <laughs> I just needed to do something. So yes, that was how yeah. I would come first when I did. Wow, thank you. Thank you. You know, as a matter of fact, I have learned, I've come to learn that. And that was why I actually put a price on the writing course. Yeah. Yes, because if, if it was left for me, left to my passion, how passionate I am about seeing people become authors and the rest, I would have given that course out for free. Yeah. But I thought about it. I was like, I need to put a price on this so that people will take more seriously 
and yeah. i guess it's reason i have gotten more results yeah. rather than having given them out i've given out free books mm. and free courses mm. people they won't take it seriously mm. they will yeah. not read the book but mm -hmm. if you use your money to do something i think yes. it's another lesson yes we have to commit we have to invest in where we are going to mm -hmm. yes like you know how to write a book you know about grammar how to write well and stuff like that but you still decided to go ahead to invest in where you were going to or where you're going to it's very important yeah. very important yeah. so thank you for sharing that so um the book is about editing and proofreading what's uh -huh. the difference between editing and proofreading okay so um generally people just take editing and proofreading as meaning the same thing people don't even know that there are different types of editing but this book in particular so i used how to edit and proofread your writing as the tagline because i was merging several types of editing into a short process that a writer can use so the, the so in, in in not many words editing is that you know bit of making your work or making your writing better by checking things like the structure checking things like the logic the flow is it consistent okay so if you're saying something in one part of chapter one and you're referring to that thing later on in the book how do you connect the ideas so generally editing so like i said i merged developmental editing and copy editing right in this book in a short process so i basically talked about you know how to get your paragraphs the way they should be how to structure a piece of writing so that it makes logical sense so basically that's what editing is editing covers structure it covers flow okay. it covers consistency proofreading is the very last stage in the writing process so you finished writing a piece of work you have edited it you're happy that it makes sense you're happy that it is coherent you're happy that you, you know your sentences are not vague you know and you just want to check that the punctuation is correct you want to check that the spelling you know is fine you want to pick out little bits and bobs you know with your grammar okay maybe i should have put should i end with a preposition or not or is it okay to ignore it you know those little things so proofreading is a very final stage you know in the in the in the publishing process before it goes to print but because this book, so it, 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 remember we're not talking about professional writers, I'm sorry, professional editors now or publishing. We're talking about what editing and proofreading is for the everyday writer. Proofreading is that thing you do before you click submit on that, you know, for that post or that blog, you know, before you click send for that email. Yes, but editing is making sure that it makes sense. Okay. Thank you so much for breaking that down for us. You're okay welcome. so um this book is about or it's for the everyday writer mm. for a micro blogger on mm -hmm. instagram on facebook um everybody basically like yeah. i've gone through the book i was privileged to go through the book thank you for the gift and i found that see this is something that everybody has to go through now mm. I could say I can hire somebody to edit this work for me. Why do I have to edit my whole work? Like, mm. why do I have to proofread? Okay. So, several reasons. Depending on what you do and how often you write, you would know that it might not be sensible, it might not be practicable for you to employ an editor every time. More so, editors are not a dime a dozen. To get a good editor, you probably would have to wait a bit because, you, for example, you can't come to me now and say, Lola, I need a piece of work editing for tomorrow. Heck, I've got my own plans. I've got a queue of work. You know what I mean? So you, you don't right. approach an editor and expect them to produce stuff for you straight away. They would give you, you know, a turnaround time. So you need to factor that into it. So if so, like we say in Nigeria, if you don't want any editor to fall your hand, right, you will need to be able to do stuff by yourself. By yourself, right? right. Because see, there's I, I believe in 
being as excellent as you can. But we know that sometimes it's okay to be good enough. Being able to edit and proof your work gives you that confidence that, okay, this work might not be perfect, but I'm not going to get a query for this job at work, for, for this piece of writing at work. My, my, I'm not going to get embarrassed because um, I sent this piece of work to some stakeholder, to a customer, you know, and it was error reading. I'm not going to be sad because I lost opportunities because I wasn't careful to pick out, you know, the spelling error. And I'm not going to say that, oh, for example, this particular example is for people that want to become bestsellers and that want to go through the normal publishing route. So you know if you want to go through traditional publishing, you would need an agent. Because publishers don't, don't just take books anyhow. You need an agent and one of the criteria for agents to take you on, you know, is to see that, is to, is to make sure that your work is as good as possible. It's a bit like a CV when you want to apply for a job. An agent will not just snap you up. They want to see that, okay, this work is great. Okay, storyline makes sense. And this is a careful writer, right? So if you're yeah. going through traditional publishing, you need to be able to win over an agent. And then agent will, you know, speak for you with the publishing houses. So that's another reason why you need to be able to proofread and edit your own writing. Another reason would be that, um, it is important for your credibility. So you call yourself a blogger and your blog is full of errors. Heck, you will not be taken seriously. Even if you're taken seriously, you would only be taken seriously by a particular class of people. Now, this is not me being snobbish or anything like that. If you are trying to attract an elite audience, you know that errors are your greatest enemy. So, credibility as a writer, as a blogger, you know, is important. The kind of people you want to attract. By God's grace, every time I write, people read what I write and they respect me for it. See, the first time I write, my first draft is not what I post out there. I'm not perfect, but I know what to do. So when I've written my first draft, I go back and begin to read with a critical eye. Okay, so credibility is important as a writer, if you've got a message. Another thing is being understood. So put aside reputation, put aside credibility, put aside wanting to attract you know, attention from an agent if you want to become a novelist or something like that. Put aside all of that and think about being understood. The very essence of communication, whether verbal or written, is being understood. So if you put out a piece of writing, you know, for the world to see. And people are having to read a sentence twice because it doesn't make much sense or because they're trying to wonder, oh, what did she mean here? Or what did he mean here? Then you've lost the, you, you know, you've defeated the purpose. You've lost the, that opportunity of engaging them, of passing across a message, you know, and it's sad, it will be sad if your message is a very hey. important one. Like, yeah, you back. Don't worry. <laughs> you, you went okay. for a second. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yes. So it, all right. It, it's Thank important you. for, and I think I think for me that's the most important reason, being understood. If not, you're just playing games, and you're right. you know lying to yourself if you would not double check your work before you put it out there. So I hope those reasons make some sense. Yes, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, do you know um? For someone like me, I have made a few errors in the past. Mm -hmm. I would throw something out and my husband will call me from his office. Mm. <laughs> that post that you put up, go mm -hmm. and check line so, 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 so. Mm -hmm. You know, my husband is someone like you, very critical about words and things <laughs> like that. Okay, so I think it's, yes, I, I'm learning. I'm learning very fast. You know, I'm, I'm yeah. usually um, on this, on the run because I have so much to do okay. but yeah. it's obvious from the reasons you have given us that it's important that we that we do not hurry to throw things out without yeah. properly checking through them i yes. hope you can hear me because it looks like Perfectly. the network yes, from my hand is not oh i can hear all you all right okay yeah. thank you okay so um someone just reiterated that says Avoid the mistake of posting your first draft 
think mm. about being understood by your mm -hmm. audience very important and very someone else wrote credibility and target audience thank you ara for joining us mm -hmm. yes so it's very important very important and thank you so much let me just add and everybody let me just has add become before a content we move writer on. everybody writes can i just add something before we move on yes now, most please. people write on social media right even if you're under pressure and for whatever reason you you, you posted your first draft make it a habit to come back and read whatever you wrote i do that there are times that I will put a post out, even after having proofread it, you know, I'm being confident that it was fine. But because I know that the human mind plays tricks, if you meant to write a word like this happens a lot with prepositions, the simple ones in, to, on, you can easily miss them. Right. And you would read them because in your head you had written them. The only time you would catch those errors, if no, if no one points them out to you, is when you come back because you're coming back with a fresh pair of eyes you know with a fresh mind the, the the entire piece is no longer in your head and then you can read it critically so before um, after you've posted make it a habit you know a few hours later come back and read it and you'll be able to pick out any errors or any sentences that don't quite sound like you want them to sound i hope that helps um Dr. Lola has, I think her network is Misbehavior Network. Behave yourself. I'm not sure if people can see me though, because I am the guest. If people can still see me with her network not working. Hi, sis, you're back. Well, I hope I'm back. Oh my God. You are back. <laughs> Lord have mercy. The thing though is, I, I kept on, I carried okay, on talking. So I'm not sure if. I missed what. I Okay. Would the audience have been able to hear me even though you were off? Okay. Hello? Hey. Third world internet, can you please behave yourself? commented that they could hear you so oh, they could that's hear good you. i'm happy to hear that i'm happy to hear that yes i can hear you i'm happy to hear that thanks for for verifying yes oh okay um, okay okay and they can see us too all right so oh, thank good. you for your patience i'm sorry the network is not uh, no, you just, just hacked in hop and haw. Okay, so we we'll mm. go on. Um, yes, so I would like you to share with us your thoughts about the importance of referencing. Mm. You know, like uh, for someone like me, we have, have been a victim, mm. like funny instances. Mm. I have gone on, on the internet, surfed the internet internet and then i find my writing there on another person's blog or another person's website mm. and i will be thinking wow i wrote this like this is yes. my work can yeah. you just share your thoughts with us what are, okay. what's the importance so, of referencing people when you are not the the original owner um, writer when so the, the thing content is, is not to you yeah there's something called plagiarism which sadly a lot of Nigerians seem oblivious to. Exactly. Plagiarism is sim simply passing of work that is not yours as yours. Now, I think it comes, you know, plagiarizing comes from a place of insecurity and small mindedness. I always tell people no information is new, right? We are always cycling information and putting our spin on it. And that's what makes it beautiful. So I see something from this point of view, I put my spin on it, and then you read it and you think, hmm, that's, that's true, I agree with that. Or, oh, I thought about that the other day, okay? If God gives you an idea and you don't act on it, even if you were the first person God gave it to, he will give it to somebody else. And by the time you see it in paper, um, on paper or on the internet, you would remember that, oh, and I had this idea, right? Now, 
why am i saying this just so that you understand that ideas okay are not exclusive to people when you reference when you cite a source you know and you reference where you got this you know this information from what it does for you is that it gives you credibility it's a different way of thinking it gives you credibility because it means that okay so you 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 found somebody to buttress your thinking and that's what citing and referencing is all about you think about some you're, you're making an argument or you're you know bringing up an idea and you're just finding somebody that has thought along the same lines as you and you're telling the world that hey this person i agree with this person this person you know thinks this way too that's what you know you you, 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 you do when you that's what you do for yourself when you cite a source and reference things correctly it's wrong it's, it's it's punishable by law i hope that nigeria will get to a point where you know people begin to be punished for plagiarizing and that will, will become a better right. you know set of people people that think the way we should be thinking as a whole i'm not saying that as i'm proud to be nigerian i'm proudly nigerian in fact i have made sure i've been careful not to lose my nigerian accent because i want people to ask me lola where are you from your accents a bit different i get that all the time because i try to speak properly but i still do my best to retain my nigerian accent i could easily go for an eloquence class and start sounding properly british but my children sound british i've chosen not to because i love where i am from so when i talk about nigeria i don't say with disdain i say with a very you know deep concern for 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 us as a people so that we are credible people with people that we can show up with the rest of the world as people that know what they're doing so please when you cite the source you're doing yourself a favor and old habits die hard if you get into the habit of taking other people's content and passing it off as yours one day you will take the wrong person's content and they would have your time and they will fish you out from wherever you are and the consequences will not be easy (laughs) so i always tell people get used to doing things the right way as tempting as it could be to just copy and paste yeah right right thank you so much thank you you're most welcome we would be running up soon i just wanted to share with us as a professional editor Hmm. you know some of the common errors you have come across in people's writings okay Okay. um just some examples maybe we are actually also maybe some of us are actually guilty of those errors too Mm -hmm. of making such errors okay so um i'll just share maybe three the first one which a lot of people are guilty of and i think that comes from texting when you want to write i apostrophe am m m so you want to use the contraction of i am you want to use the shortened form of i am so instead of writing i apostrophe m you write a m it's it's not something that we should be doing so please be conscious of that am is completely different from the contraction the short the shortened form of i am another one is it's so instead of writing it's going to rain if you omit the apostrophe and you write it's going to rain it doesn't make it, it doesn't you know have any meaning i mean whoever is reading anyway would know that that's what you mean and in informal circumstances it's fine but if you've got big fish to fry if you're writing a proposal if you're writing for your boss at work you know little errors like that actually if you have really finicky stakeholders it could keep it to get you it could get you in trouble another and the reverse is also the same okay so it's just be careful watch out for those little ones um it's those two even the biggest or the best of writers can easily miss out on on them another one is bean so b-e-e-n and b-e-i-n-g b-e-i-n-g is a state of is a continuous state so i'm being honest so i would use b-e-i-n-g being because i am still being honest but if i have done it in the past do you understand or if it's something that has occurred in the past then you use b-e-e-n and because they sound alike you know people kind of 
fall prey to that very easily so it's worth watching out for and similar ones like seen and seen s-e-e-n and s-c-e-e-n-e just watch out for that and then when you want to write right up that one i've seen it so many times i'm tired of counting if you want to write the words write up it's not r-i-g-h-t u-p it's w-r-i-t-e just pay attention to these little things and it will help and from an editing point of view i'd recommend that try as much as possible not to let your sentences run for too many lines Okay, if you try and make your sentences at most one and a half lines long, or at most two lines long, you will be more easily understood. That's more of an editing tip than a proofreading tip. But the other ones I mentioned were proofreading tips. Punctuation is also very important. Be careful when you're using semicolons and colons. A semicolon is not a colon. Okay, a colon introduces information. A semicolon, you know, connects two ideas. So be careful when you're using that I'll, i have a rule that i created for myself if you cannot use the word and then don't use a semicolon okay you know that it's the colon you want a semicolon is the dot the full stop and the comma at the bottom and the colon is the two dots so be mindful of these because they can change the entire sentence or the you know your your, your entire paragraph or whatever it is that you're writing so i hope that helps somebody or well, Actually, I hope that helps everyone. So we have you back. <laughs> so there's my few. I was going to share three, but I couldn't stop. Thank you. So you, <laughs> can tell I love, you can tell I'm yeah. in love with this thing I do. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I'm going to watch the, the replay and um, I'm sure I'm going to get something too. I believe so. From what you just shared with us. Yeah. All right. So, um, Quickly, can you just read uh, some favorite pages or lines from your book to us while we are planning I don't have to favorite, end I don't have this show? <laughs> every every, okay, every part of the something. book is, is lovely <laughs> from to the me. book. <laughs> also, it's my baby. Yes, yes, Let yes. Me yes so. Let me find something. Let me find something. Yeah, right. Let me find something. Okay, let me. I think this will be useful. Um. I don't know if you can read, it says punctuation variance, right? So I'm just going to read a paragraph because I can tell that, you know, it's nearly six o'clock. Right. So punctuation variance, like spellings, like spellings, some punctuation marks also have British and American variants. To prevent coming across as careless, it is important to be consistent with your chosen style. The differences in punctuation you will most likely encounter are quotation marks. I'll, read, I'll just read the first paragraph so that the information can be complete. In British English, single quotation marks are generally used for dialogue, while Americans use double quotes. So um, I hope that helps somebody. If you're writing in British English, okay, if you're using British English variants for your grammar, for your vocabulary, remember to make your punctuation also British. So quotation marks in, in British English are uh, typically single on the outside but if you're putting a quote within a quote then in british english the single quotes go on the outside and the double quotes go on the inside and the reverse is the case for american english so i hope that helps somebody are you back with us i hope i'm back now you are back so i just read a short um, a short except i hope somebody you know found found it valuable looks like dr lola is gone again dr omolola let me go have a half like I'm i dr. Lola. Dr. oh my god She's this dr. network <laughs> is not doing right by me <laughs> so far, it's not doing worry. right Hopefully, by me Hopefully not by me. Okay, I hope so. I hope so. Okay, so um how can we get your book? Uh, people it's that on would Amazon. like to get the book. How can they get the book? It's on Amazon, it's on quite a few platforms. It's on Amazon. If you go to Amazon and type catch it first, Lola Yongai, you would find it. It's on Okada Books, it's on Kobo, it's okay. on Smash Words, it's on Bands and Noble, it's on Script you know so it's on lulu as well so it's on quite a number of platforms so but type in catch okay. it first 
and put my name okay. after it it will, to bring it up straight away the reason is that if you just type cartridge first those three words are quite popular so it will bring a host of results but okay. if you put my name right by it it's taken straight away. yeah awesome okay so what other resources do you have to offer uh, what services can you just tell us the services you offer okay so in terms of um services i obviously i'm an editor so if you've got a book in the pipeline or you want to write a book but you don't know how to write it get in touch okay i'm also a writing consultant if you struggle with writing and um, if you struggle with the mechanics of writing so you are, your, your grammar is poor you don't have to string your sentences you know and all that get in touch i offer personalized writing coaching and at the moment i'm running my boot camp you know and i've got professionals in the boot camp and i'm helping them improve their writing so personalized coaching group coaching which is my boot camp editing proofreading ghost writing so you want to write a book but you really can't be bothered for whatever reason i i offer ghost writing services as well and um, you know work with you to get out your story and put it in writing and very recently i, I delved into publishing very recently wow. i published awesome. my very first book and um, awesome. it, was, it was a massive step for me it was something i did afraid you know you know when you know that you are made for more so um mm, i've got right. that as well and so you'll be if you see bla stories so when i started bla stories i had a host of ideas coming through but i've recently restructured my business so bla stories is now the publishing arm of my business and awesome. you people that are close to me will notice that the website is down because i'm creating re recreating the website and then i've got a book in the pipeline which i'm going to launch on or let me use the word release because with this in this day of everything virtual i don't really think a launch yeah, exactly. is appropriate the way we know launches to be so it's, um, yeah, it's, right. it's about cv writing it's called from cv to job interview and it just contains easy rules to help you write a better cv a cv that really wow. sells you you know because the, the cv is a sales document it's not just about dumping right. experience employers right. Research has shown that employers, you know, spend 8.8 .8 seconds on each CV. So you need to be different. Yeah. Your CV needs to stand out. You need to put something that will grab their attention and make them yeah. shortlist you for that interview. So that book is coming out on the 9th of November. And I'm hoping that wow. it will be a blessing to many, many, many people. It will be. It will be by yeah. God's grace. We yeah. can just expect the best coming from you. And I'm so happy for or oh, i'm happy to know that you in short we are twins right mm. yeah <laughs> we are yeah. doing similar stuff <laughs> all right so thank you so much thank you so much for you know uh your time uh mm. finally what final words would you like to give to prospective authors writers generally and you know just final words okay of encouragement think, okay there would come in two sentences that people that are familiar with my posts would have read every now and again and they th these words come from a very deep place of concern and a a deep place of wanting you to be better at whatever you do the first one will be that it's never too late to get things right you might have been a poor writer mm. all your life if you decide that today I want to change you can start by taking baby steps don't ever write yourself off when it comes to learning a skill that can better your life you know and the second one right. will be that how you write speaks volumes right. about you that, that's something for you to ponder on you know and so that's the last one how you write right. speaks volumes about you so there we have it wow wow thank you so much thank you welcome thank you thank welcome. you thank you i've had an amazing time uh on the I chat well. with you this evening even though the network was trying to frustrate me but yeah. I, we won we, we won in the end so thank you so much <laughs> <laughs> yeah we did having, yes we did so thank you so me. much so we, um, we you can reach out to lola and 
you can reach out to her on Facebook, on Instagram. You know, just look for her on the internet, on social media, mm -hmm. and connect with her. She has already shared yeah. with us some of the services that she offers. So please reach out to her. And I tell you, Catch It First is a book that everybody needs to read. Everybody, everybody, and I mean everybody. That's why I didn't even bother asking her what her target audience is because mm -hmm. it's a book for everyone. We all create content. Mm -hmm. You know, we are in a, that age where you have youths writing. Yeah. You know, there are some things that actually annoy me. Mm. So you're chatting with a younger person and the person is writing KK and you're like, mm. why don't you just write OK? Like, exactly. what, what's that? <laughs> what is that? That's, that's very <laughs> yeah. I agree with you. Yes, yes. So, and that if, if we don't take cognizance of the fact that we need to mend our ways, we take that into corporate writing too. And it's just like in Nigeria when we start speaking incorrectly you yeah. know in informal settings when we get to formal settings we find ourselves finding it difficult to, to speak correctly exactly so it's better we learn to do it right at all times whether yeah. we are in informal settings or in formal settings so True. thanks again thanks everyone welcome. that joined thanks us i'm you. really grateful thank you everybody i appreciate you God bless you. God bless you. It's been an amazing first episode. I'm really glad. I'm fired up. I know Yay. that it's going to be a wonderful, yes, it's going to be wonderful Sunday after Sunday. Well, it's going to be by monthly every mm -hmm. other Sunday. Yes, that's when I'll be having the show. So by uh, the 18th, I think, I would have another wonderful author come on the mm -hmm. show. It will be wonderful to have you join us yet again so thank you i wish you an amazing week ahead i wish you a beautiful month because the month is still very young and may this quarter bring for us amazing results in yeah. all of our endeavors by the grace of god in jesus name all right so have a wonderful evening thank you everyone god bless you bye everyone. bye, bye.